I'm going to lose my mind. Dude, they were around in the right corner. Oh my god. Hey, what's going on, Champ Squad? My name is Insanity, if you guys are new, and welcome back to the Apex Legends video. So the first split of Season 9 is just about wrapped up, and I did hit Masters rank once again. This will be my third season getting Masters. I got it both splits in Season 7 and both splits in Season 8. So I've had a few seasons experience playing in these Diamond Lobbies, and I feel like I've learned a lot about what it takes to succeed in them. And today I'm going to be doing my best to provide you guys with my best tips for hitting Masters rank. I do think these tips apply regardless of the map, so last split was on World's Edge and next will be on Olympus, but I think a lot of what I discussed today will, will apply in either case. Alright, so today I'm going to be discussing the following aspects of Apex Legends Ranked, and I'll provide a timestamp for each. The first is going to be finding a team, so finding a squad, or whether you should solo queue. The second is going to be mentality or playstyle that you should adopt in Ranked once you hit Diamond Lobbies. The third is going to be team composition, and the fourth is going to be kind of my own personal take on the truth about Apex Legends Ranked. So the first thing I'm briefly going to discuss is how you can go about finding a team for ranked. I've had so many people comment on my vids or other people's ranked vids or streams saying that they've been solo queuing ranked for several seasons and they can never break past diamond on their own. The truth is, unless you're a really crack player who has a lot of patience, solo queuing through diamond lobbies will be quite the challenge. You'll be going up against pretty much exclusively three stack teams that probably have at least some chemistry with each other, so you'll be getting probably base D4 teammates as your rando teammates. That's how it usually goes down. So it'll be just really hard to, to win those fights most of the time without a team that's kind of preset. So if you're in this camp of not having a good rank squad, the best way to find a team in my opinion is through Discord. There are a ton of different Discord servers that have ranked LFG looking for group pages that you can use to find teammates that are similar skill level or rank to you. I recommend using the big official Apex Legend Discord. And I also have my own Discord that has some pretty solid players in it. So the links to these will be in the description. If you've never used Discord before, I would recommend trying it out. There's a lot of good players on there and you can definitely find a team doing that. There's really no excuse to not have a team at this point. Um, there's a lot of people always looking for squads in those Discord servers. All right, so next on to mentality or playstyle in ranked. This is the most important aspect of succeeding in these lobbies. And the best way really to guarantee you gain RP in diamond lobbies is to just be careful and selective about the fights that you take. Only take high probability fights where you have some sort of advantage and you're not likely to get third partied instantly. Generally I think early fights as soon as you land can be a good option because you can know based on free looking whether you're surrounded by teams or whether it's just kind of you and one other team nearby and because everyone's still looting you're less likely to get third partied so sometimes fighting off drop especially if you get some good RNG upon landing with your loot are a really good opportunity. Also once you get into that range of between 16 and 10 squads left you're gonna you're probably just going to want to chill because you're missing out on placement points and with that many squads left there's a lot of people just waiting to third party just on standby for the opportunity to third party a fight so you want to be careful in that range i'd say between 16 and 10 squads but if you do get the opportunity to third party a fight or find yourself with some really good positioning like high ground right over another team then you should try to get some early kp if you play scared in these lobbies you'll kind of psych yourself out and you won't play well you definitely have to fight in these lobbies to improve or hold off positioning at the very least if you have a good spot in ring. But the point is to kind of just be careful about what fights you take. Try to only take fights where you're third partying or you have some clear advantage over another team. And another key thing is that you want to kind of get fights over with as quickly as possible. After you get that first knock, you really do want to full send the other team and try to wipe them before another team shows up. Octane's jump pad is really good for this. As soon as you knock a team, or sorry, as soon as you knock uh, the first guy on a team, you can just full send them with the pad. And then once you get to top 8 or 10, hopefully you have some KP under your belt, and you can just play for positioning. So next, moving on to team composition of ranked. Without a doubt, I have to say, the strongest team comp that provides the safest way to gain RP and Diamond, or Pred Lobbies for that matter, is Revan and Octane, or Revtane, and then probably a Bloodhound would be the best third for that combo. I mean, with this Legend comp, you can just play super aggro and take more fights just using Rev's Totem, which gives your entire team a free push, really, 
with basically no consequences or no risk. To me though, Revtain's pretty lame. It's honestly just about ruin ranked for me and a lot of other people. It's really bad for the game for there to be a mechanic that basically provides a team with a free push without any sort of risk or consequences. I mean, when you pair Revenant with Octane's jump pad, a team can basically pad right on your head from like 100 meters away, so you'll have no idea where they're coming from, they're really hard to track, and you definitely won't be able to find their totem since it could be buried like behind a cliff 100 meters away from where you actually fight them. I mean, I was honestly just about one Revtain push away from just not playing rank this split and losing my mind. As you can see in this clip here, we get a little bit excited when we are able to kind of turn the tables on a rev team. Ah, how the turns have tied, my friend. How does it feel, you shitters? How's it feel, you shitters? So yeah, anyway, if you're an individual that actually has some dignity and self-respect and don't want to run Revtain, there's still some other really good team comps for high tier ranked. I say the most meta legends in ranked this season are Octane, Bloodhound, and Gibby. You need to have at least one of these guys on your team in my opinion. Two is probably even better and all three of them together make a really good team comp. Octane's pad is just crucial for getting out of tough situations and pinches, or for full sending a team after you get that first knock. Bloodhound scans provide your team with really important intel on where your enemies are, and also for scanning out, sniffing out rats, getting some easy KP uh, late game. Also, Gibby's just been a staple in rank for a while now, really hard to bring down, and this bubble can provide your team with on-the-go cover. So all three of these legends are really good, they're S tier for ranked in my opinion, and should be on your team comp. So I'd say my favorite team comp for this split on World's Edge was Octane, Bloodhound, Gibby, but also been running some Bloodhound, Bangalore, Octane, and sometimes Gibby's been subbed out for Wraith. So I'd say pretty much every team comp I had had an Octane and a Bloodhound on it. Octane was really fun. He's really useful for full setting a team or getting out of a tough situation and repositioning. So yeah, that's my take on the best team comps for high tier ranked. But honestly, after playing ranked for a couple seasons now, I plan on getting Masters again next split just to get my third enemy Masters badge, but I'll probably be taking a little break from BR ranked. In my opinion, getting Masters just isn't really an accurate assessment of skill level anymore. So many teams exploit Rev Octane for points, and even good players on other teams just play super cheesy to get RP, either ratting in buildings super silently, or just using other weird tactics to catch a team off guard. A lot of pretty average players with like 1.5 KDs now have been getting Masters just because they're using Rev Octane and third partying fights in Revolt. So I think at least until something changes with Rev Tane, um, next split will probably be my last split that I get Masters in Ranked BR. I'm looking forward to trying out Ranked Arenas when it does drop though. I think that that could be a little bit more of an actual assessment of skill level since it'll just be a fair 3 on 3 instead of having to worry about third parties and just ability spamming, which is what Ranked has been turning into recently. But anyways, I'm happy that I was able to get into this split. I'm looking forward to doing it again next split and getting my third Masters badge. This is the game that got us to Masters. I really wanted to end on a win to hit Masters rank. It's kind of like a tradition these past couple seasons now. So we kind of played super safe. We routed it out kind of until the end, and then we were able to get a couple KP and win the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and provided you with some helpful, useful advice. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.